discuss further with them and see how we come in, how exactly we come in, so that we can uh, work together for a mutual benefit on these uh, uh, pro projects which they have around us. And you know our major problem on this campus is water. That's the big, 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 big problem that we have. You need to come to Arizona. We're the driest place on yeah. earth, yeah. but we have the best agriculture in the world. Yeah. And the University of Arizona, matter of fact, the Minister of Agriculture from Ghana and his staff are coming over to visit. And the University of Arizona is known for its work uh, with Africa. So mm -hmm. it's a very good place to go. You go to a place that has very limited resources in water because you know they have developed it. Mm -hmm. For over a thousand, maybe two thousand years, the traditional people have developed the canals that we still use today. Mm -hmm. That's now extended to being 800 kilometers long. Mm -hmm. I wanted to introduce from our host family, this is one of your students. <laughs> Which school? I'm, I'm accountancy level 5, okay. Chungong Dia the Rainbow, one of the students you are supervising. So all your projects here and uh, I've not had time to read them. All those I'm supervising that as soon as I come back, I would like to see you people somewhere after the 6th of January, between 6 and 10 so that we look at your projects together. I'm taking them on along with me to read them. Thank you. Because my holiday started today. This man is I'm very, in. very key also, um, with Makuda, uh, with Mr. Polycarp. A very strong person in great position of leadership in this area. No, the number one uh, after the fawn, I'm sure. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, in my I'm mind. A, I'm a I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. He said you related yeah, to this other one. This is my cousin. You know, okay. I'm, uh, I'm a very engineer by profession. And, uh, I was in Carbon Development Corporation. Mm -hmm. Then I'm um, President General of the Bangui Cultural Development Association. Mm -hmm. We are in partnership with them. That's, he came here on our ticket. Okay. That's it. Okay. We just dedicated two corn grinding machines that will affect, there will be five that will affect 6,000 people. I know that you have the camera, just so we take a picture. Sure. Would you mind if we, oh, thank you. Could we take a picture with you? Mm -hmm. you have to do that? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Thank you very much. Let me give to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Would you mind if we have a photograph of you? No problem. Everybody come, we can make a big line here. No, no. They, they just called me. No, I'm not seeing that. Yeah, I will call you when you get there. Are you seeing as well? Yeah, yeah. Okay, then, I will, because I'll be coming back here, I will, I'll be coming back to come around. Yes. 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 Okay. Fernando, you need to get up. <laughs> I am too big. No, then you goes behind. Go behind the lady. That's why everybody's on his leg. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, I, I hope you wouldn't mind signing our visitor's book. Yeah. Yes. Okay, why well, here? Let me see some opportunity to, to make Would my you mind uh, if we take to make myself you. also known. Okay. Uh, I'm Angafa Valentine. I'm the current manager of the Bongo Water Authority. I got involved in creating mm -hmm. this contact. Okay. okay. Well, that's good. Is you maybe is your supervising model? student? She is just taking advantage of the that's good. She is just taking advantage. That's you good. Have that, yeah, camera. I should be in that one now. No, no, stand behind. Yeah, okay, right. now. Okay, right. 
He writes with his left hand. <laughs> that's that because so, we're the that smartest is, people. That's somebody, in other words, if somebody writes with <laughs> the left hand, that's 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 study so much. Until writing is no longer a problem. <laughs> so he writes that the is everything yeah. with the left is. We're going to put in here, si se puede. Even, even uh, Obama writes with the left. Yes. Most yeah. Americans write with the left. Oh. Would you? I have something for you. Speaking about Obama, uh, <laughs> very nice picture for you uh, that you can have for your office. Obama. Oh yes, yes, yes. Um, wow, that's really nice. Okay. Okay, that's why. I, okay, when they sign it, they should give it to you. Okay, thank you very much. Hey, this is a nice picture. If you send me your email, I will send you a Christmas card from President Obama. My email address okay. is on the card. When I get back, I will send you a, a Christmas card. But also, their dog, Bo, signs. He makes a footprint with his paw, the dog. Yeah. And if he doesn't react, next 14 is in there. Okay, this is my school. One of my, <clears throat> one of my this is a school that's not virtual. This school is for young people that other schools don't want to have. We call them dropouts. I bring them back in, we educate, and then we graduate. Okay. Them. Yeah. So now that you know how to get there, because it will be um, uh, this is Mexico here, Mexico. California and the Pacific Ocean. These are our trees, the cactus and pep and our state and our state flag. So if you allow me to pin you, it will be okay. I don't know where the buttonhole is so I don't make it. An extra, extra hole in your soup. And it's going to look really nice because now you, and by the way, our, our governor is a woman. So we have good place to take. <laughs> we told you about Dr. John Arnold, who is an expert in microfinance and many other things. He's a builder. So he has come with his team. Uh, Certainly, we're going to have a long lecture on micro, which is a school. Um, it does a lot of other activities. They are doing a lot of it in this country, especially in African country. So, I'll hand over the microphone to you so that you can do more of the introduction with his team and exactly on what he has come to do. So, you listen carefully and attentively. Well, the very much. Doctor, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I know when you sit a long time, you start muscles starting getting going to sleep, and you don't listen well. So I want everybody to stand up. Do an exercise. Everybody stand up. Stand up. Now. The students in the U.S. when we want to wake up and want to feel good and feel empowered, they do a certain clap. And I'm going to show you how to do it. 
and it starts slow and ends with yes we can. So watch. We start slow like this. Go ahead. education 
came to talk about uh, microfinance. So, what is microfinance? Who knows? Is it a microscope? You're looking at a little bug or something, or what? What is microfinance? How many of you saw microfinance, micro business on your way to school? Every one of you saw a micro business on the way to school. Who was it? Maybe the lady cooking corn in the side of the road, or the farmer planting their seeds, or the person that is has a small shop selling something, or producing something, or supplying something. Now, the United States of America is the most powerful country on earth economically, and it is made up of all the societies of the world, the African American, the Hispanic, the Irish, all the people came, and they came with an idea of industry. But industry comes with finance. So, in our country today, in the United States, 80%, write that down, 80% of all the businesses in the United States are micro businesses or they're businesses of five employees or less. I'm going to repeat that again. 80% of the businesses in the United States are of five employees or less. Okay? So what does that mean? The engine of the economy, the uh, the strongest economic power in the world is run by micro or small businesses. So, if you come to Cameroon, probably 90% or 95% of your businesses are the small entrepreneurial people that work every day to supply the needs that you and I need to live. And that's what micro business is about, or any business is supplying a product that somebody else needs and is willing to pay for. So, what year did micro business start? Maybe a million years ago. We don't know, but we know small business has always been with mankind. It's always been there. Even in the Egyptian, the Mesopotamian, all of those, the Romans, the Greeks, their whole economy was built on the very, very small businesses. So, what does that imply to you? All right, let's cut this uh, group into half here. Let me walk right over here, and we're going to divide this group here and this group here. Now, during your lifetime, half of you will own your own business. The other half will work for somebody else. So either you're going to work for yourself, or you're going to work for somebody else. So, I think you should be preparing for both things. I, I still don't know what I want to be. I'm still, every year, I'm doing something new. So I prepared myself and I had a good preparation in college. I went to the University of Arizona uh, in Tucson, Arizona, which is the southwest part of the United States. I got my bachelor's, two masters, and a PhD. But it wasn't the paper that counted. It's what I learned in the classroom. Even if I had gone to school, I probably would have done all right. But you need also to study. So, your own business. What kind of a business? How many of you already have a small business? Okay, how many? Let's see, let's talk to somebody here and find out what they're doing um, for a business idea so we can get an idea of what students do. Yeah, I am a Bukani Fiziko of a chemistry level 3. Okay, yeah, I have a smaller. Microfinance for for students of the University of Bermuda. I call it Est Bobani Help Students Fund. It began this year on the 6th of November 2012, and it's going up. Okay. Thank you. Um,
a little niche for yourself and your own business. It's extremely important to look at the marketing study. Now, I was just in Limbe, and you may have seen us on national television the other night from Limbe. We dedicated a micro business incubator. Now, I'll explain what the incubator is in a minute. For, for uh, so women with sewing. The thing of it is different about the women, they all had diabetes. So, we made micro wool, we rented a facility, okay, and we bought the uh, different kinds of machines. You need the zigzag, you need the regular sewing machines, the marking machines. How many of you saw it on national television? Did any of you see that the other night? It showed all over the country on Tuesday night. But anyway, if you didn't, I'll explain what it was. So, the idea of an incubator. Now, when you go to a hospital, you know there's... A, what, is it, what do they use on incubators in the hospital for? For immature babies, right? For babies that haven't quite made it and need a little bit of extra care so they can go out and go on their own. A micro-business incubator does the same thing. These five women, for maybe six months, one year, 18 months, will work in the micro-business, so it's called the high-tech tailoring shop. And it's right on the main street in Lindbay. And right there, people come in and have the made. So each woman has their own small business in the same room, okay. and as they have set up, uh, they call it Strap Up Nigeria, where the students are um, using their extra time to go to the communities to teach the children to read. And they found corporate sponsors to help pay for their expenses. Well, students can do many things, using that as one example. But you can get together and provide services. Maybe some of you, how many of you know how to do construction skills? Know how to build a house? Well, okay, some of you do. How many of the women know how to sew? How to make dresses? Okay, maybe you four or five should get together and start your own little cooperative shop. You know, in numbers, sometimes you can create more business and you have more resources to support what you're doing. So, the other thing I wanted to mention, one young man talked about technology. He talked about technology. Have you heard of Facebook? How was a young man that created Facebook? one years old. He created Facebook. He's now the richest person on earth. He learned through technology something that nobody else thought about. He thought about why not having a Facebook on the internet where people could see each other and communicate. So technology is important. And that's why my schools Actually, I really push technology because I believe it's the future. So, I know it's hard to find computers, but if you can afford internet cafes, I know in Ghana where I live, uh, our students go a lot. I see them always at the internet cafes. Uh, they're communicating because the internet is the window of the world. It's the window of the world. So if you can latch on technology, it's extremely important. Remember, every day I have 10,000 students in my school that are studying online in America. And I can't emphasize how important the future is for every country to have technology, to have that learning. And you can learn on your phones a lot, too. Because a lot of the tele tele uh, cell phones now have a lot of things that they can do. So communicate and always think if you're interested in business, 
to look for the market of something somebody needs that you can produce that they can pay for. Remember, profit minus expenses are or income minus expenses equals profit. So often up and I always know my students say, uh oh, you talk too much. Time to sit down. So I always listen to my students and I always think in my mind, okay, I said too much. It's time now to ask questions. Because you probably know more than I do what you need to know. So we're going to take a little time uh, to uh, answer some questions about micro business, about technology. There's one other thing I want to talk to you about. I just came from Ethiopia. Uh, the president of Ethiopia invited me and my friend Dr. Cousins to speak about the natural cure of diabetes. How many of you has diabetes? Probably everybody knows somebody has diabetes. If not, you're not looking. You're, you need to correct your vision because everybody, family, somebody has diabetes. Maybe something you can cure? Of course you can. Because it's only because of the food and the things that you drink that you get diabetes. So, there's a book that I have here. It's kind of interesting. Maybe you can find the book. It's about, it's in the other part. Um, in America, the young people are supposed to say, uh, wait a minute, I want to take better care of my body. I don't want Pepsi-Cola, I don't want Coca-Cola, I don't want sweet cakes or sugar in my diet. So many of the teenagers in the United States have gotten rid of that. And it's probably smart. Many teenagers in the U.S. do not eat any dairy food, no, no dairy products, no milk, no cheese, and they do not eat meat. So what do they eat? They eat vegetables. Uh, they eat raw foods. Matter of fact, these two teenagers uh, made this book. They call Eating Without Heating. In other words, in the kitchen, there's not even a uh, stove. And so it's kind of interesting what they have been able uh, to eat. Now raw food includes nothing cooked like vegetables, nuts, fruits, yams, so all of the things that are natural. Why should we eat that? Because we have to be careful that you develop a strong body. You think now that you have all the strength. My two daughters have 115 and 119, and they say, oh yeah, everything. Yeah, but you have to realize someday you get older. And the things you eat now will then determine the body you have later on in life. If you want to live a long life and a healthy life, you need to start eating well now. So I'm going to give you three things to think about if you want to reduce your incidence of diabetes by 80%. Number one, Forget about the sweet drinks and drink the heavenly drink. What's a heavenly drink? Water, because it comes from heaven. 80%, 80% of your body is water. So if you get up here and drink a Coca-Cola, your body has to take the color out, has to take the sugar out, has to take the preservatives out, just to convert it back to water. So why are the strongest athletes in the world vegan or vegetarian? Did you know the top football players, the top basketball players, the top Olympic people, they don't eat meat. They don't eat, uh, they don't consume sugar. They don't consume alcohol. And that's why their bodies are so strong. So think about your own body and care enough and love your body as much as that you eat the right things, drink the right things, and then remember the stress test. Get rid of stress. And the third thing is to exercise. Not only your mind that you're in school, but taking that walk at night or in the morning or whenever you can. So exercise, reduce stress, eat and drink well. And that will be a uh, key. Because you can't have a business if you're sick all the time. So those are a few ingredients. So now, question time. And let's see what we can do with... Um, 
between is it working? Can you hear? No. Not working. Let me walk back up here. Technology and micro business relay. Somebody said they had a technology. Who was the man that said they, they had technology as his micro business? Somebody stood up and said they had uh, some kind of internet thing. Well that would be a connection right there. Um, I know some young people that have gotten laptops and started their own uh, internet cafe. So technology is very uh, definitely. Also, I know some students at Emo State, uh, Emo State University that have set up shops outside the university and they do all the data entry for the for the papers. You know, like your term papers, and they do very well. So all around Evil State University in Awari, Nigeria, I see micro business with young people that have computers. Students will come in, say, I have to have this paper typed for my class, and they do very well. So that's one example, okay? Another question? We're going to have to, I'll go back and then have to come up here because of the signal. Okay, so you have this idea and you want to have a business, so how do you get it financed? And like, Other way we do in the US, we get investors. We get four or five people that believe in your idea, willing to put some money, and then you share some of your profits back with them. We call it profit sharing. Microcredit loan funds, that is one way you can get a startup money, but you must do a business plan and it must be very clear what your intent is and how you're going to pay the loan back and who your market is and if your product is good. So you have to be well prepared to get the loan. So think about all those things. All right, another one. I told them that there is a school, there are schools in Europe, school for clowns. So all these are entrepreneurship. They should not only think of going to start a small business, a small business is a small business. Now, but for us to carry it forward, uh, maybe a doctor could give us or throw light on how we could break this, encourage these people to some to form groups and then teach and sponsor them somehow or kickstart them. Okay. So that's own program. It is alone with training. And the training starts before the loan, in the loan process, and long afterwards. I uh, started a loan fund in Ghana. And I came back a year later, they'd given out all the money, but they never had any classes, and so the people were struggling. So you have to have strong training, strong training. So that's how the answer is. Micro business is not just about loans. Most of it is about training people to start a business, develop a business, and be successful. So you have to get good people uh, to, I've been bringing a man who's a lawyer from Nigeria here to the Bambui area uh, to Limbe where we start our micro loan program because they've been very successful there and he does the training and he does the encouraging that you're talking about. I'll tell you a business we were looking at today uh, over at Mama's house where I'm staying. I asked the people in the room about face painting. You know face painting? It's very popular in the United States. We get colored paints and they'll make flowers. So when you go to parties like the clown does, ma'am, like the clown does, face the clown does, does face paint. So we have colored paints, they're oil-based, so you can wash them off. 
So you go to the party, and every time there's a festival, people are decorating. The children love it, and they will put little parts on the children. But face painting is very popular in the U.S., in Mexico, and I think in Europe, too, right? So, um, where, do you know what I'm talking about? You just uh, paint a flower, paint a design, very bright colors. This is during a time when you're having a party or a festival, but in the U.S., man, the clowns, you were talking about clowns, you're not listening, uh, you're talking about clowns, you're talking about clowns, right? The clowns in the U.S. do face paint. And they can... So you put 1,000 francs away, we call for the rainy day, the rainy day. That means for the time when business is low. So yes, savings, education, and the loan fund are the three key things. We have time for maybe two more questions. I know you guys are getting tired because I've been talking too much. So let me go over here and uh, talk to you. So savings, education, and lending are the three main ingredients of micro business. Well, before I ask my question to Doctor, I would want to give a give an advice to one of my colleagues that way on how he can get his funding. When you want to do your business, you don't have to be selfish. That is, I went to Douala and sold my shares there. And by proposing a very good dividend that no businessman will reject. So when you want to do your business for the start, the supplier or the person who is going to fund your business will make sure that you give him a good proportion of the amount. He will not reject. And then make sure that the plan of the business is free shop free. And my question to Prof now, to Doctor, is, is uh, in your school, of, is in your distance learning school, or in your online school, I want to find out how many students are there from Cameroon, and whether they have to come to abroad during the time of graduation. Well, students um, are, are everywhere and nowhere in my school. I always say everywhere and nowhere. I have no idea where my students are at any time. I don't know. I had one girl, one young lady, listen to this. She became, you know what bowling is? You do bowling? Bowling, you know? You go to bowling? Bowling, do they do that here? We know. It's a game that we play in the U.S. where you throw a ball and it goes all the way down and knocks over some pins. You know what I'm talking about? Okay. All right. One of my students, she became, this is a young girl, she became the national champion of all the United States of the sport of bowling. So, guess where she, her school was? She would sit in the chair waiting for her turn to perform. That's when she would do. She might be in one city today and bowling in another city the next day and another day. So I have no idea where my students are. But I do know when they are online. Because with technology, I can track how many hours, how many minutes each of my students was online. And guess what? You know what time my students are online? From 1 o'clock to 4 o'clock in the morning. How many of you are up like that? How many of you study? I know this young lady here. She's in my host house. She gets up at 2 or 3 in the morning, and she's studying. How many are like her that you study at night? Yeah. Do you know why? Because young people have endorphins in their mind. You're thinking towards the back part of your brain. As you grow older, you towards the front of your brain. But right now, and my daughter, Chaska, she loves to study from about 1 to 4 or 5 in the morning, and then she wakes up or goes to sleep. So, you never know. Okay, one other question. What do we have? Somebody over in the far side over here?
the fifth evil. We want to have a house, maybe an automobile, be safe, have a good family, and our children better than us. That is what our goal is about. So how do we get there? You are the thinkers of the future. You are going to replace all of us up here very soon. You will become the leaders of the world. So you must think, you must answer your own question. You have the answer. I don't have the answer to your question. Each one of you are going to have to figure out how to make it work. And I gave you a few key ideas today. Think about other other people need that you can produce and you can sell. And once again, the formula of income minus expenses equals profit. So we're going to stand up one more time and we're going to do our yes we can. And then you're all, I guess, dismissed. So stand up. Now we can see who was sleeping, the ones that didn't get up, right? Okay, are we ready? Okay. of everything which Dr. John Arnold was talking about. And he said, uh, of course, I'm GM. Most business in the U.S. are five, about five employees. The rest are what? The rest are what? He talked about online. Most of the people do things online. That is the technology which uh, Doc was talking about. So that the students can at least see what's happening in their schools over there and displays to them. And they will see you there and your team. So you see exactly what's happening and they will know practically and they will feel practically what micro finance business is all about. So um, yes. Okay, thank you very much. Um, before I end up, I would just like uh, to introduce to Dr. John Arnold that uh, Professor Fogin. She's in charge of academic affairs in the highest stock office of management of University of Canada. She just came in when you were talking. That's Professor Fogin. Let me stand up, please. <laughs> and the coordinator of the Business World Cooperation in the University, Professor Bamen. It's the city of the <laughs> And I would like. Dr. John Arnold. Yes, our young lady here. She's not from the US, she's from she's here. She's doing accountancy in the fifth year of her set. But she's here in the Barbie Water Project coordinating and helping Dr. Arnold who came from the US. So she's one of the Of course, you know Armstrong teaches accountancy. In the Dr. Arnold, she's been here. In fact, she is working very hard with uh, 
Yes, Roger the Manda tried to bring water, the Babwe Water Corporation, and also to extend the water aspect in, within the university. You know, within the university, we don't have water. So, there were some of the aspects that were benefiting from it. They will bring water here, not only water, bring agriculture, bring technology. In fact, some of you will live here and go to the United States. We're just preparing that. Well, some of you are passing where you go down to school and go to the US. And he is really there welcoming people. Our Vice Chancellor will be leaving, I think, tonight for the US. And definitely, maybe he will be in touch with you. So, we want to remember, we are actually grateful. And I think if you have one last word to talk to them, or oh, Prof. Bama, you say something. Um, we're going to learn some Spanish words right now. And Fernando and Teresa know what I'm going to talk about. They're going to help me. Um, you remember we said yes we can? Who used yes we can recently in the U.S.? President Obama. Do you know how President Obama won the election? To the young people. You know? You talk about the question of technology. Millions of college students, university students, they were organized with technology and they got the people out to vote for President Obama the first time and now the second time. This time he won 330 to 206. And the other side had billions of dollars. He didn't have a lot of money, but all of the technology, the text messaging and all the online communication. See, the United States, the students through Facebook and texting, they're totally organized. So, now, so if you translate, yes we can, into Spanish, it's simply, si, se, puede. Si, se, puede. And that was used by one of the most famous organizers of the unions of the farm workers in America called Cesar Chavez. Anybody ever heard of Cesar Chavez? You should look him up sometime. He was like the Martin Luther King was for the black people, for the Latino people. Anyway, let's try a couple of words. C means yes, C means we, and then puede means we can. So, C, C, Pue, De. C, C, Pue, De. Okay, I'm going to go around and see who's not saying it, and then they get the, they get the practice. Okay. All right. You better say it this time, right? You talk. Okay, I'm going to watch. C, C, Pue, De. C, C, Pue, De. You're chewing gum. C, C, Pue, <laughs> she was very good. Okay. All right. Let's see. Ready again. Si se puede. It's not. Oh, she's talking to her boyfriend on her cell phone. Uh oh. her boyfriend on the phone she got it so that must be for the rest of the sister you lost your pen who's selling pens here you can have this pen just joking okay so we end up C se fue de C se fue de what does it mean Yes, we can. All right, that's enough. Go. If you didn't hear anything else, who should your boyfriend or your girlfriend be? That's a very strong question. Who knows the answer of who should be your boyfriend or who should be your girlfriend? Who knows? Anybody, does anybody know? That's a very strong question. Who was your boyfriend? Who's a boyfriend? She knows, so she can't tell. She's heard me speak before. So, you're, okay, you come tell.
your boyfriend or your girlfriend should be in your school books and your school bags. Okay. All right, you got that, right? Okay. All right, you didn't expect that one, did you? You didn't expect that one. Now, that doesn't mean you have to break off your yep, with your girlfriend or your boyfriend, but your books. Now, this is this young man's girlfriend. This is your girlfriend until you graduate. Okay? Where's your... This is uh, your pen. Is your boyfriend until you graduate. Okay? Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Uh, my school created to help a lot of young women that had early pregnancies and had to drop out of school. So I created a school for women and young parents and working parents so they could come back to school. So I know how tragic it can be. So be very careful in you, the way you treat your body and those men, how you respect women and women, how you try to turn men on. You need to be very careful because your main thing right now is your education, okay? So be cool, as we say in the U.S., and we'll catch you later. Bye.
production of agriculture in the world. Matter of fact, during the winter time, we produce most of the vegetables for North America in the desert for the snow. So you may wonder how that happened, but thousands of years ago, the native people, the first people that lived in our region of Arizona, dug canals and they tapped the water from the mountains. Those same canals are used today. It's called the Central Arizona Project. It's now 800 kilometers long and it produces some of the richest farming in the world. So we come from a region where there is no water, but that's why we've grown to respect water in every sense. Even the water from the roofs we collect in cisterns. And uh, we do not have grass in our front yards. We put stones because they don't require water. But they're very beautiful also. And we have plants that do not use much water. We recycle the water uh, from our toilets and it's clean and we use it in irrigating our parks. And so if you go on and on, uh, the harvesting of rain. You talk about harvesting crops, we harvest rain. And uh, so, <clears throat> a little bit about us, but that's, um, actually I do other things. I offered an NGO called Project Vet, and I'll give you a card and a little bit about, about us and so forth and so on. But um, basically we started in 1967, part of the, um, you may remember the Civil Rights Movement in the United States by Dr. Martin Luther King. I'll be pretty in, but he was a great civil rights leader. And out of that came funding to start different projects. I decided I wanted to start a project in the agricultural regions of Arizona, among what we call the farm workers. Not the farmers, but the farm workers. So I asked for money for a training school. And all they gave me was an old bus, a transport bus. So I said, fine, I will make the transport bus my school. So now I have 10,000 students that study online, virtually in Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Arizona, and then I have seven other schools. But we do everything from educating the young people from the farms all the way up to the grandparents that can still uh, get an education. Uh, we do organic farming, and we do vegan farming. I'm vegan. 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 As a matter of fact, we're offering four master scholarships for one year, fully paid, including transportation, room and board, to come to Arizona and learn about becoming vegan farmers. Vegan farmers are totally what we call raw food. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with too many of those uh, terms, but uh, the raw foods are definitely something of, of interest. For instance, <clears throat> the young people in the United States, they talk a lot about eating without heat. So when you go to our kitchens, there's no stove. Yeah. We don't need one. <laughs> so what would we eat? Uh, these young people, well, they're showing some of the things that they, they make. These are all without sugar, no. without salts, no. without any chemicals. It's all pure food. You can see. And so vegan farming, is actually producing raw food. There's no fertilizers. There's only compost. Okay. And I told a story, and I, I'm sorry for the other people who heard it, but uh, we have an organic farm uh, that we think is highly developed. And uh, they asked what we, someone asked me, what is on your farm? I said, we have greenhouses. We have greenhouses that are heated by the sun. We have these big barrels of water. They heat up during the day, and they keep the uh, greenhouse warm at night, even though it may be zero degrees outside. So we found ways to use the sun and so forth. And we use our animals a little bit differently. Um, and I uh, was asked if we had any chickens, and I said, yes, we have chickens. And they said, do you eat your chickens? And we say, of course not. Why would you ever eat your chickens? And they kind of looked at me like, you're looking kind of strange. But because our chickens work for us, they're our employees. Oh. So in the morning, the chickens go out and they eat all the pests. Yeah. So we use no pesticides in our farm. 
part we have 200 chickens every day work for us as our take care of all of our bugs. At night they come in and roost and their droppings become our compost. So we use no fertilizers. And so um, then they produce organic eggs which we sell. Mm -hmm. And some of the chicks we hatch and we sell and that helps us sustain our farm. Then in our farm most of what we produce we do not sell. We donate. So we will produce a great harvest, and uh, I have a video that I'll leave you, I'll send to you. Yeah. And our farm produces so much. Yeah. So we take it to the food kitchens of the elderly. We take it to the church where the hungry people are. Community and visiting uh, the quarters. And here in Bambi. Here in Bambi. And assessing the impact of the Bamenda University into the community in terms of um, environmental, economical and social as well. So from that perspective, <clears throat> we, we wrote the, our conclusions and basically the agriculture, as you know, it's uh, the most important income generator for the families and um, the possible assistance that you may give would bring such uh, a strong improvement and will have such a high impact. We also noticed that because of the construction of the university, the prices, there are more pressure now in the farms, into the farmers. Uh, to rent a farm now costs more than it costed two years ago. So land management, water management, and the skills, the, the farmer techniques are very, very important to help the community um, with the sustainable development. So this is just uh, one of the aspects, and the other one is the water. We also have a very uh, important um, program with Bangui Water Authority um, involving Mr. Polika. Uh, he will also be mentoring the whole program, uh, where we will have uh, in Bangui three water engineers uh, looking at the water resources and identifying quantity, quality, and mapping the um, demand, where is the demand of water now. So we can have a good system in place to provide water, not only for the domestic use and for the university, but especially for the farmers. Because if you, as Dr. Arnold said, if you have water, then you're farming, your harvesting can improve very so we came together and he kindly invited us <laughs> to join him in well, you're this more mission. Than I am. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> but thank you so much. <laughs> but I think one thing that she has said, um, first of all, I strongly recommend them and also Polycarp. You have within your area here a great resource that is very community grassroots, yes. which all universities want to get to that grassroots level, these people can help that happen. The other ingredient uh, is micro-business. We have been investing money into the micro-credit fund here in Bangui so that the farmers can come and get seeds uh, and so forth. So that's very important. Uh, also, we have been funding micro-loan to two of the youth farms. One group of young people grows Irish potatoes yeah. and the other grows the um, uh, tomatoes. tomatoes. So we're funding them all through the microcredit. The other thing you'll see on television, national television, maybe tonight or tomorrow, the yeah. yeah, last two days we've been dedicating corn mill grinding. Okay, centers. yeah, I saw you in the program. Yeah, so <clears throat> that is what we are uh, doing and it's very exciting because of the study that they did. We realized if we put five of these corn milling machines, we could affect the lives of 6,000 people who are having to carry the corn all the way to the junction of the corners. Maybe we, we, we had a, a training program that we called the Farm Family Visits, 
and uh, it is within that framework that our students will found in the various uh, villages going right into the farmers uh, farms yeah. to visit them, give them, offer counsels and even work with them. Yes, exactly. Because they were not just talking, mm -hmm. but uh, they were also applying uh, with them together in the farms. Uh, and they also, when they are there, we go down to follow them up and uh, to give additional counsel right on the spot. Uh, I think uh, this program has been seriously felt in the various in the villages. But I think uh, uh, training trainers and each community it has a very big multiplier effect. Mm -hmm. Because once you train one person, he is able to train 10 persons, and the 10 persons are able to train 100 persons, and see the multiplier effect right. is there. Um, I think that would be a very, a very nice program uh, for us to build their capacities. Uh, and it's going to incite many to join uh, the field of agriculture because the idea is that generally it is left to those who don't have the power anymore to do it. Mm. Uh, young ones uh, sometimes are reluctant to enter into the field of agriculture. Uh, but I think with such a program, I think it's a, it's a very nice one. And uh, I was just talking to the, the, the chairman and telling him that we have to make good use of all those institutions we have around here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Bamboo should benefit first yeah. uh, from all those expertise we have around, all the technical know-how we have around. And uh, just what she said is it, it, true. When I came here about uh, 15 years ago, I was buying a, a, a bucket of potato, 400 francs. No, uh, it's 2000. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's quite expensive. Yeah. All this one is because of all the, what we see today, the university, the school of agriculture, things are evolving. And if our production is not, <coughs> it will be extremely difficult. Uh, I think such, such a program will be very interesting. And it's going to have the community at large. Uh, and I think because you have the Bakuna and you have the uh, quarters already organized. Those places that we can reach and go down and reach a lot of people, like bring all the quarter people together, doing the train the trainers. Well, you can reach a lot of people by working with these folks. And because the land is <coughs> the same and the small land, we need to produce more, more, more with the same land. The so we land. need to improve <coughs> the land management and the water management. management. These two need to grow together yeah. and we are going to achieve a very good result because even we can produce twice a year so with the same it. land we can harvest twice a year at least yeah. be water irrigation because yeah. we have the sun mm. it's beautiful sun yeah. strong yeah. sun water fertile land yeah. uh, uh, water we call it the garden of Eden here yeah you <laughs> <laughs> remember somebody told us we call the garden <laughs> Can, can I say something? Uh, you talked about two times a year. In the desert, we have six planting cycles in one year. Yeah, you see? Six planting cycles. There we do. And if the desert can do it, think of what you can do. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing is, uh, the reason we're offering this master's program that you asked for a year, for four students, we want to teach vegan farming so that they can come back knowing that there's alternatives that they can grow crops that are very healthy. They don't have to use all the expensive fertilizers mm -hmm. or chemicals. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean we're saying not to, but we should give them an alternative mm -hmm. because some people can't afford those things. But even the scraps from your table, we collect those in the U.S. and people always have a little compost, compost yeah. bin. Even the rich people do this. They just put it all there and then later on in a, a few weeks it's compost. They put it on their flowers and or their plants and so we need to teach them some, some organic farming. Because I think if, if you...
Would you uh, be, uh, also another thing you could consider the four people that we will be sending to the U.S. Yes. for the master's program? Yeah. Uh, maybe we could co-enroll them at your university along with the Tree of Life, so that they have credits from the United States, but they have dual credits here. That's possible. Awesome. That's amazing. Because that would be another nice thing to be able to offer. That's just a nice possibility. Because we do that a lot of times with universities. Um, mm -hmm. uh, they co-enroll, and um, the credits from the, over there would be here. Yeah. And hopefully those people could come and give lectures later on. Yeah. Yes. They train the trainer. <laughs> That's good. That's why we're doing this for a year, and they should come back with a lot of the so that would be something we'd work out with your curriculum people. Yeah. We'll send you our curriculum. Yeah. Would we send it to you or to who? No, whoever. Whoever. She send it to me, she's going to work out. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That would be uh, good. Good night. Would you make a good time? Mm -hmm. You'll give that email. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. No, he's this one. <coughs> Okay, it's a camera. Okay, camera. Okay. Yeah.